This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Kindle Scribe, which came out mm, just barely for holiday shopping season 2022. It's now early 2023. And I'm going around to reviewing the 10.2 inch big Kindle, which is their highest end model yet. Duh. And it's the first one with a pen. We've seen competitors for several years now. In fact, I reviewed some of them like Onyx Books products with pens and obviously Remarkable 2 has a pen, Kobo Ellipsa. So uh, Amazon, right? What, what took you so long? So they finally got around to doing that. But not only that, at 10.2 inches and 300 PPI, it's the highest resolution big screen e-reader on the market because Kindles, if you can say nothing else, they might not be the most technically advanced. They do offer a very sharp and good reading experience. And you've got adjustable color temperature, side lighting, 35 side lights, all that sort of thing. We can look at it now. One thing you probably noticed when you're watching our videos, whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, or a laptop, is it comes with Wi-Fi 6E, the latest 6 gigahertz standard. That's faster and has less congestion because fewer homes and businesses are using it. And that brings up our video sponsor, the TP-Link Deco Mesh Wi-Fi 6E. It's a tri-band system and you get two satellites for $299, which makes it by far the most affordable Wi-Fi 6E solution. So if you've been shopping around and you see those prices like $600 and more, well, half the price, it gets interesting. And even better, I, when they sent this to us for the placement, I actually set up and tried it and I ended up replacing our existing Wi-Fi 6 network because it was that good. The throughput on this is excellent. The reliability and uptime is good. The app is also quite good. Uh, the service also includes some parental monitoring and some home security stuff too. So you can, you know, worry about basics like that, but the app is really easy. You use it to set it up, whether it's iOS or Android and you boom, you're going in no time at all. Be sure to check out the link in the description to learn more. And now back to our video. But before we get further into what this Kindle offers, I know some of you, probably anybody born after the year 2000, I'm guessing you're probably even not into e-ink ebook readers, right? And so if you're wondering what the purpose is, and forgive me those who have been using them and get it, first thing, you can read them in direct sunlight, right? Where your, your phones and your tablets get glary and impossible to see. These look even better under direct sunlight. So if you want to read outdoors, they're also easier on the eyes, no blue light issues at all. Nice contrast, no glare. And then there's battery life where you're talking about measuring your battery life in hours with your phone or your tablet, or even if you're using say a Microsoft Surface Pro. With these, we're talking weeks. I mean, especially one this big, it's like literally, I haven't been able to kill this. You can go two, three weeks with this without having to plug it in. Nice. And lastly, distractions, right? That's the thing, if you're using your Windows tablet PC or your phone or whatever, there's notifications all the time. You're getting messages, you're getting emails, things are pulling out of your reading experience. So the temptations, oh look, YouTube shiny, right? Watch a YouTube video, I just got a notification. So this is kind of relaxing. It's better for your mental health. All right, and their spiel about why e-ink and e-book readers still exist. Obviously, in some ways, they are completely lacking. Like, they refresh every certain number of page turns, and it's noticeable. You see the screen kind of, well, refreshing. refreshing. And the reason is they don't have to refresh, refresh 60 times a second like an LCD does or something like that. So they're saving some power when they're doing it. Now, Amazon and others who make e-book readers with pens have done a very good job of reducing the latency with the panel. I'll say that. So while you might notice that you're, like, you're trying to use this as a web browser, it does have the built-in web browser. It's a torturous experience. I don't use it. Uh, but anyway, with a pen, it's near instantaneous. Now, if you're using this for art or something like that, it may be that's not going to be what you're looking for. But if you're using it as a notepad, which is the temptation with this one, then it feels good enough. All right, speaking of feels good enough, the pen on paper like experience here is excellent. And that's kind of a hallmark of ebook readers, but Amazon did a very good job at the texture of the glass and the pen. This is not like that slippery, crazy experience that you get when you're trying to write on your iPad or your Galaxy Tab or your Surface Pro. It just feels grippy and nice. Good job there. 
Now, in terms of it being an ebook reader, clearly, if you're looking for a big screen ebook reader, whether it's because you need bigger text size or you're like me, you're a fast reader, so you're always doing too many page turns, so you get more words on a page, or you just want the sharpest at 300 ppi, it's hard to beat Amazon and the Kindle experience, right? Besides the fact that Amazon Bookstore is absolutely immense if you like to buy from them, uh, you can also sideload over USB. You can put EPUBs on here, convert them first, either use Calibre or use the send to Kindle feature that Amazon offers on their website to send it. Uh, so you're not even just locked into Amazon books here. I use a variety of formats. I buy from other stores. I get stuff from the library and all that sort of thing. So it's a wonderful reading experience. And Amazon already had that kind of nailed, right? So they just took what they were doing with the Oasis, which this looks a lot like, minus the page turn buttons and the water resistance. And you've got adjustable font size, margin size, all the things that you can customize on this. It's wonderful stuff. So good for that. Um, Given the bigger screen size, it's better suited, obviously, for manga and comic books than the smaller screen ones are. So the big screen, the sharp PPI, it's all nice for that. And of course, the drawback is color. I mean, if you're reading black and white manga or something, then that's fine. It doesn't matter. You get grayscale on this. But me, if I'm reading full color comics, I'm still going to read that on my iPad. All right, so how much does this thing cost? $339 for the 16 gig, and that includes their basic pen. That's not bad, actually, compared to the competition. They're typically priced higher than Amazon is. Now, you can also spend more money and get it with 32 or 64 gigs of storage. There's no micro SD card slots, so there's no expandable storage here. And if you're just reading ebooks, the 16 gig is really, honestly, fine. You can put hundreds and hundreds of books on this. Now, if you're doing a lot of PDFs that you're sending to the device, which can be awful chunky, 20 megabyte, 50 megabyte, more, right, PDFs, or you want to do audible books, which you can do using a Bluetooth headset, with this, then you probably want more storage because, like, all well, Audible books take up a lot more space than your average 600k ebook, right? So the basic pen, that's the one that we have, and it's absolutely fine. This is Wacom EMR, which is the same thing Samsung Galaxy smartphones and tablets use, and it's an excellent technology. Um, so also the same as Remarkable, too. So I have a lot of these pens sitting around that will work with it, so I didn't see a need to get the fancier pen. They're the same size, so you're not giving up any ergonomics, but the more expensive pen, if you want to spend $30 more, and that gets bundled with the higher, higher storage capacities anyway, that one adds a button which you can assign what it does. Most people like to switch between ink and highlight, and it has an eraser on the butt end of the pen. There's that. So let's talk about the pen experience a little bit more. Now, if you're looking for something that would be for art, I mean, I still probably would choose a color device, even though there's something appealing about that kind of pencil on paper sketching thing. Uh, this is not the one that I would choose. I'm going to be reviewing the Onyx Books Ultra soon, which is one that I would say has a better writing experience for artists because the pressure sensitivity is much more granular there. This one has only a little bit. I don't know why in software they didn't enable more. Probably because it leads to tighter handwriting. That's one thing I noticed. My handwriting looks much better on a Kindle scribe than it does on any other device because of the lack of messy, pressure sensitive, all that stuff. Anyway. Uh, you get very limited pressure sensitivity here. The notebook app for a company as big as Amazon, who's coming from behind the competition, granted they're all much smaller companies, so maybe Amazon doesn't feel threatened, but it's a little pathetic. You can create notebooks, you can create folders, um, you cannot jump to different pages though. So literally you have to thumb through every page if you have a multi-page. If you make a 50-page note, God help you, let me put it that way. And the tools are very basic. You have a pen with four line thicknesses. You have a highlighter with four line thicknesses. No color assignment. I mean, it is grayscale. You can't see the color even if you assigned it, but others, like books, do offer color assignment anyway. And you've got the eraser in, guess what, four line widths. Um, there is no converting handwriting to text, believe it or not, here. Uh, there's no clipboard, though Amazon said they will be adding a clipboard. Hmm. So anyway, it's pretty basic in terms of features, but if you're just looking for a substitute for a pad of paper and the ergonomics that go with that sort of experience, then you've got it. If you want something fancier, uh, then the competition, like I said, you've got the Kobo Ellipsa, you've got the various books products with pens, probably offer something more sophisticated for you.
Now, when it comes to writing um, books, well, if you're writing on a, a Kindle book that you got from the Kindle library, then it's going to work the same way that writing text notes did with the on-screen keyboard on any other Kindle. Basically, you press and hold and it pops up and it says you want to write a keyboard note or a pen note. And if you use a pen note, you write in the little box, a rectangle at the bottom, and it saves it with its itsy bitsy little icon next to that word. And you can see all of your notes afterwards. Uh, it's not like you're writing marginalia literally on the book. You can't deface the book, shall we say. And if you have side-loaded books, you're going to have to use Amazon's Send to Kindle feature, which converts it basically into their own format so that you can then edit the books. If you then look at the book on, say, like I'm looking at my Samsung Galaxy Fold afterwards, I could see keyboard notes, but I couldn't see any of the handwritten notes. I believe I'm supposed to be able to see the handwritten notes. You can't edit them, but they're not there. With PDFs, it gets a little bit fancier. You have a floating palette. You can move from one side to the other. You can collapse it. And then you get, well, those tools that I mentioned, the same tools as for the notepad, the eraser, the highlighter, and the pen. And you can write all over the PDF, and that's fine and good. Now, you can't edit that anywhere else on a different Kindle client afterwards, so it's of limited use in that respect. So work to be done. Nice to be able to do it. And for those of you who like to do crossword puzzles, it's wicked fun to actually be able to do crossword puzzles on this. So I'm not saying it's a total failure, but it, this is not a feature laden sophisticated note-taking device. It's quite simple, basic, mostly intuitive, except for if, for example, I want to look at my notebooks on my Galaxy, which I can view but not edit, uh, then it's hidden away under the More tab and then Notebooks. So interesting how it's tucked away and hidden there. The only thing I would ding it on as a e-reading device is usually with these bigger screen devices or with an iPad when you're reading e-books, right? You put it in landscape mode, you can have facing pages if you want. Now this one has an accelerometer and you can use it with the spine on the left or the right to suit you. I'm left-handed, so I typically put it on the right, uh, but you can put it in landscape and then have facing pages. Hmm. In terms of ergonomics, this one is my favorite among ebook readers with big screen sizes. It's got the slightly curved side, so it doesn't feel so thick, not straight sided, not heavy. It's one of the lightest ones on the market. It's not too different from the Kobo Ellipsa. It's easy to hold, and though it weighs almost a pound, it doesn't feel unbearably heavy. And, but in terms of weight, also keep in mind that an iPad Air is only just a little bit heavier, so it's not an ultralight device by any means. Now, when we look at the competition, there's Remarkable too, but that doesn't have side lighting. To me, that is a big hurt if you want to read this in anything other than perfect lighting. Uh, and also, the Remarkable 2 is more of a digital notepad, and it does EPUB e-reading. It's not as sophisticated with the e-reader things, but if you're looking more for a notepad, for example. Also, uh, the Kindle is going to be the least expensive of all these. And like I said, we're going to be reviewing the Onyx Books Ultra, which is a big screen they try to turn it into an Android tablet in a way. It's interesting with the camera on the back and all this stuff. Uh, that one is more expensive. That one has more sophisticated note-taking and inking experience. It doesn't have the Amazon Kindle store directly, but you can actually download the Kindle app and make use of Kindle books that way as well. But that's going to be a separate review. And I know for a lot of you who are looking for just a mainstream, very easy to use kind of product, well, you might not consider it. but. Keep an open mind. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.